Hello, y'all. How you doing today? I'm doing all right, I think. <laughs> Did my walking earlier, so my hips hurt, but nothing unusual. i uh, just been a few days since I made a video, and thought I'd talk about being an overthinker. <laughs> Um, a lot of times my friends and family think I am kind of spontaneous and make very snap decisions without much thought. And that literally couldn't be further from the truth. Um, when, when I have a decision to make and I'm considering what I should do or if I want to do something, I will actually consider every option possible before I make a commitment to do or not do something because that's just me um I I don't talk about things like that I just do my research and consider all the outcomes, all the possibilities that I can possibly imagine. And I've got pretty good imagination on everything. So I'll come up one day and say, hey, you know, I'm going to do this. And people will be like, well, where the fuck this come from? Why are you making a snap decision? And they just don't know. I've been thinking about it for quite a while. Because I never talked to, to them about it. But I am, I'm a realist. 1,000% a realist. I absolutely believe in not living in a fantasy world and not knowing and understanding the facts of things. Don't get me wrong, though. I, I am a forever romanticist. Even, hmm, even after four major relationships failing, I am still the I am still the optimist that there is someone out there for me that. My one love is out there, and I will find them, because I can't help it. Um, I am all about love and mothering. That's my sign. I'm a Cancer, and we are the mothers of the zodiacs doesn't matter who or what it is we will fucking mother you to death can't help it but i keep it real a lot of times i keep it real by being my own harshest critic um <laughs> but i'm working on that 
back when I was with my first husband. Um, that was, of course, when I began to get my yearly female checkups. And because he was military, I used the TRICARE network and went to a Navy run clinic to have my yearly pap done. And I pretty much expected everything to be okay. Um, so I had it done. And three weeks later, I get the card in the mail about it. Now, there were four options that could be on that card as to how the results were. The first one said normal pap, no issues whatsoever. Um, one of the others, I believe, was like semi-normal, but... Um, Nothing earth-shattering, basically. Can't remember what the fourth one was, but it also said, you know, nothing concerning, just need to re-follow up. Um, and then the last option was abnormal pap, cancer cells present, get in, you know, basically get your ass in here and get another one done and then holy shit kind of thing. And I believe this was 1988. So um, when I got that card in the mail, it said the fourth option. The only one that didn't have the disclaimer, no cancer cells present. So, um, of course, I I get it and <laughs> automatically start freaking the fuck out. I call to get set up for another checkup so we can verify they weren't abnormal results. Um, I, because this was a bit more serious than normal, I was sent to civilian doctors so everything came back much quicker but between the time of me getting that card and getting back in to see doctors about retesting etc i of course you know after freaking the fuck out I start considering all the options. Oh, fuck. I've got cancer. What the hell am I going to do? What's going to happen? I, what a, What's going to have to be done to, uh, you know, fix this? And, and how am I going to go about getting that done? And, of course, my husband at the time, he, he was more like, Oh, I'm sure it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Just calm down. Chill out. And I looked at him like it was a fucking idiot, of course. And I went on back in my mind and started, okay, well, hopefully it, it was just, you know, a mess up and things will be fine. But holy fuck, if it's not, then I may have to have surgery. I may have to have chemo. I may have to, I mean, just anything and everything. So, after confirming the results were abnormal, I went to an OBGYN with all the results, and they said, well, first thing we got to do is a biopsy. I'm like, because... In the, I think it only took like maybe two weeks for me to get from getting that card to getting into the OBGYN. Um, it, but in that time, I had already 
gone through everything, accepted the fact that I may have a life-threatening, possibly terminal illness, and I knew exactly what I needed to do. So they were like, we need to do a biopsy. I'm like, fine, get it scheduled as soon as possible. We'll go from there. So we did. We took the biopsy and it came back as dysplasia of the cervix, which is, it's not cancerous. It is the precancer cells present on my cervix. So we get the results and, and I just, I look at the doctor, I'm like, all right, what do we have to do? And he told me they needed to go and use a laser to laser off the cancerous tissue. And as soon as he told me that, I'm like, what will the results be? Um, will everything be okay? Will I be able to have children? Will, will I need any kind of, you know, other therapy afterwards? And he said, no, this should, should take care of it. And you should be just fine afterwards. And I'm like, Whew. thank God. Uh, so that's exactly what we did. Um, that, like I said, that was back in the early part of 88, I believe. It wasn't much longer after that, that I got pregnant with my oldest son. So, you know, it worked. <laughs> of course, I was still able to have my kids. I didn't have any bad issues or any kind of after effects, thankfully. And very thankfully, it never came back. Um, now, I, I have fought with endometriosis for a very long time. And... That, you know, that has been painful, but it, it it's not something that's life-threatening. It's just an irritation to, to deal with. Um, it can cause a lot of pain, but it's not, you know, not anything life-threatening, thankfully. But it it was one of the reasons that I ended up having to have my his well, the main reason I had to have my hysterectomy because my endometriosis, um, it started after my oldest was born in 89 and 1990 was my first issue with it. I had issues with it again two years later. Um, then I got pregnant with my old or my youngest son, had him in '93. Uh, in '94, I had issues with endometriosis again, and then again in '96. And in '96 is when the doctor I was going to as my OBGYN, um, that's when he recommended we take, take the uterus and cervix out, um, leave the ovaries, but, you know, remove that, which was causing a lot of problems and issues, which is what we did. Um, but two years later, the endometriosis was bad again and we had to take my ovaries then so I've been menopausal <laughs> since 1998 <laughs> which is certainly not fun uh, part of life um, 
I really don't mind. It's gotten a lot better in the past couple years. Uh, I still stay hot as fuck all year round. You know, wintertime, I'm sleeping with the bare minimum of covers, the ceiling fans going, because I turn that fucker off, I start sweating my boobs off, man. Uh, <laughs> not fun, but it's better than the alternative. But unfortunately, even after having all my baby-making parts taken away, I've still had issues with endometriosis. Um, it still causes me pain, but more than likely some of those problems and some of that pain I feel is probably because I've had so many surgeries in my abdomen area. Uh, I've been cut open from hip to hip, right at the pelvic area, three different times. And I can't even count how many times they've done a laparoscopic surgery going in through my belly button. I can't even remember how many times, but it's a shitload. So I'm sure there's a lot of um, scar tissue and adhesions in there, which probably contributes at least to half the pain that I'm in, if not more. Um, I, you can't have something done to your body without scar tissue forming. Just, it is what it is. So, uh, I just roll with it. But being that realist that I am has always served me very well because when the bad inevitably comes instead of having a very messy and length lengthy meltdown before I jump to a decision or options I've already been through all that crap, accepted the worst, hoping for the best, and I'm ready to take action. And it has done me well my entire life. Because when the shit hits the fan, instead of freaking out, I'm, a, I'm already three steps into the positive action that needs to be taken to fix the problem and to do what needs to be done. So, so like, like I said, a lot of people really don't know that I'm in my head a lot. And when I have something come up medically, my brain will immediately jump to the absolute worst case scenario and every other possible scenario I can conceive of so that when I get to the doctor and get the results, I'm ready to do what has to be done because I've already had my time freaking the fuck out and worrying and I've already put it all behind me so that I'm ready to do what needed to be done. So, I, I, at times I do feel like a pessimist, but it's, I'm not, I'm not a pessimist by any stretch. I'm just a realist. That prepares for the worst, but always hopes for the best. Every year when I get my mammogram, I prepare myself every year for that abnormal result to come because cancer runs in my family on both sides. 
and my mother had breast cancer when she was 44. So every year when I have my mammogram, I freak out till I get my results. Well, I don't freak out till I get them. I, I'm more of, okay, is this the year it's going to come back abnormal? Is this the year I'm going to have to have a biopsy? Is this the year I may have to have a mastectomy and have my boobs cut off? Um, and then when the results come back normal, which they always have, being hottest, <laughs> I am so relieved. Um, for me, the age of 44 was kind of an important one because, like I said, that's when my mom was diagnosed with her breast cancer was 44, but her grandmother had been diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 88. So in that generational skip from my my great grandmother to which skipped my grandmother because she p died from polio and then it hit my mother so the time between being diagnosed between the two women of my family was 44 years and that's when it hit my mother so every year i have made it past 44 has been for me, an extra blessing because I have made it past her point by 10 years now. I'm still having good, normal results on all my checkups. And although I have the few medical problems that I do, it, I've been lucky it hasn't been cancerous. So, do I think that it'll happen? Probably. Cancer is hereditary. It's never guaranteed, of course. And I live, I have lived a very, very different life than my mother did. My lifestyle and habits have been absolutely the polar opposite of my mom for the most part. But I am a realist, so therefore I am... 95% sure at some point, yeah, I'm going to get a diagnosis of cancer. But I accepted that fact long ago, and if I ever do get that kind of result, I've already freaked out about it long ago. I know, I know what I'll need to do, and I'll know to proceed as quickly as possible. And there won't be any, oh, I need to think about what's gonna be the best option. Oh, fuck that. I already know the options for, for this shit. And depending on what the doctor recommends to be the best decision, then that's probably the one that I'll end up going with. So it serves me, um, yeah, it, stresses me at times. I stay in my head a little bit too much. But it keeps me from freaking out at the wrong time. I'm able to take action instead of the freak out when the when push comes to shove. So some people might see it being over dramatic uh 
to to think in those terms but like I said it has really served me well my entire life and I will always continue to be that way because the older I get, the worse my health is going to get. And it ain't going to get any fucking easier. So I got to be prepared. I got to know what I'm going to do when the time's right. So that's why, that's why I do those kinds of things. But I... I 1,000% always hope for the absolute best in everything in my life. Health, family, love. Yeah, <laughs> I've failed a lot in relationships. But I'm a better person now than I was. And I certainly hope there is that one special person that I'll find that will fly. I'll find that one person that will stay by my side, that will fight to keep me in their life and never let me go. So that's just me. What works for me may not work for everybody else. Probably won't. But it pretty works pretty good for me. So. I am going to go ahead and sign off. Um, if you've watched this, I thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I hope y'all have a blessed day. And just remember, I love you. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.